Hi everyone, welcome to another Facebook Live. This is, uh, I'm sorry, Clean Machine Live. I am Jeff Palmer, the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. And the disclaimer, this video is for informational and educational purposes only. It is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. But we are going to be looking at some research on specific um, problems that people are having. And this study that I'm, the first study that I'm going to talk about is uh, titled Dietary Fat Intake and the Risk of Stroke Results from Two Prospective Cohort Studies. I'm going to put that up in the link to show you that. I'm going to open up the comments section and I'll put it in the chat box. See, a little trouble getting, okay, there it goes. All right, I'll put it up on the screen. So dietary fat intake and the risk of stroke results from two prospective cohort studies. And this was uh, released in November 13th through the 15th at a conference. And the link is below. Okay, so what did they actually find in the study? They found that animal fat, which is mostly saturated fat, increased stroke risk while getting more fat from vegetable or plant sources was linked to lower risk of stroke. So there you have it pretty, pretty plainly. So when we talk about all oh, fat is bad, no, certain types of fats are, are worse for you or less healthy for you than other types of fat, which can be very healthy for you, like polyunsaturated fats or PUFAs as they're uh, sometimes called. So PUFAs uh, are more commonly known as your omegas, uh, like omega-3, omega-6, omega-9. Um, and we'll be talking about that later in the episode, but let's, I want to be very clear that there are animal sources of fats and plant sources of fats, which can be very, very different and have profoundly different effects on the body. So like this study shows that animal fat increase the risk of stroke while plant fats actually decrease the risk of stroke. You can see that all fats are not created the same. The same thing I have the issue with people who say, oh, proteins are bad for you, too high in consumption of proteins. Well, an amazing study showed that uh, there was a 400% risk, increased risk of cancer, 75% increased risk of all-cause mortality, and even a five times increased risk, 500% more risk for diabetes by consuming animal proteins when you consume plant proteins at the exact same quantity, you didn't get those effects at all. So huge difference in what the proteins are, what they're made of, their amino acid profile, how they metabolize in the gut. So for instance, animal proteins can metabolize along with their saturated fats into TMAO. It's a long chemical name I want, or TMA in the blood, in, in the gut, and then form TMAO, TMAO in the liver. So this can be a factor for a contribution of heart disease. Well, we see the same thing with these animal fats producing ceramides. So what are ceramides? Well, let's first get to this study that actually showed that they increased that. Um, so here is the findings of the study on the stroke risks. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in the chat box so everybody can see it and read along with me um, because it's pretty pretty uh <laughs> pretty pretty clear um let's see it takes a little while to get this up and then show it up on the screen so um the conclusions a higher intake of fat vegetable fat polyunsaturated fat PUFAs like uh, omega-3s and omega-6 was associated with a reduced risk of stroke but a high intake of non-dairy animal fat total meat and red processed meat processed red meat was associated with an increased risk of stroke. These findings can indicate the importance of considering the fat sources 
when explaining the association between fat and stroke. So this is really important. It's not protein that's bad. It's the source of protein, animal protein specifically, that can be a real problem for um, contributing to disease states. It's the animal fat, not all fats, um, that uh, contribute to um, the, in this case, stroke risk. But let's also take a look at what those saturated fats can do for diabetes. All right, so when we're talking about strokes, we're talking about basically the clogging of the arteries, right? You, a stroke is a blockage of an artery to the brain, cutting off blood, si uh, blood supply to the brain, and therefore a stroke. A uh, hemorrhagic stroke is one that where the blood, blood, blood vessels burst. And this is where you can have real damage and even cause of death, obviously. You can cause paralysis, cause damage to the brain. So this can be a contributor. Now, also with diabetes, fat is the key constituent. So we now know, it used to be assumed that uh, sugar, right, or carbs uh, cause diabetes. And it's not the case. What they were measuring is the amount of sugar going up in the bloodstream. But why was that sugar high in the bloodstream? Because the sugar couldn't get into the cells. Normally, our body takes sugar, feeds it to the cells, specifically muscle cells, uh, liver cells, brain cells, whatever. And then they use that sugar for energy source. That's the normal way. Insulin helps shuttle that in there. But when you get fat, fat has almost two and a half times the amount of calories of a carbohydrates or protein. Protein can actually be used for energy too as well, just like sugar and carbs can. But when that fat gets into the cell, the fat can accumulate. So it's the accumulation of fat inside the cell that tells the, the rest of the body, hey, wait, we've got too much energy inside this muscle cell, liver cell, brain cell, whatever, and we can't handle any more energy. So we're going to turn off the receptor sites on the outside of the cell until we can burn up some of this fat. This is why exercise increases insulin sensitivity, the body's ability to accept insulin. Why? Because we're using up the energy that's inside the cell. And that way the body says, okay, well, I can take some more energy in now. And then that blood sugar can go down. That's why exercise can drop blood sugar because it's getting into the cell and being used for energy where it should be used. But when you have a bunch of fat clogging up this inside of the cell, the receptor sites on the outside of the cell close up. Now insulin cannot dock, cannot bring any more energy into the cell, and that's insulin resistance. It's resisting the body's ability to utilize in, uh, uh, insulin to shuttle energy from carbs, proteins, and fats into the cell because it's all clogged up and gummed up with fat. All right, but it goes worse than this. So we now know that fat is the cause of type 2 diabetes, uh, diabetes mellitus to be, to, to be specific. So we know that is the cause. And we know exercise and even a, a whole food plant-based diet can reduce that risk and increase insulin sensitivity. Um, but fats go one step further worse. <laughs> and, and I'm going to put it up on the screen so you can read along so you're not uh, saying, hey, that's just Jeff talking, blah, blah. No, these are actually quotes from the real study. So this study, well, the title kind of explains it all, but I'm going to uh, put it in the chat box so you can see the link. And I'll pull it up on the screen as soon as the chat puts it in there. Oops, wrong one. There we go. Okay, so uh, the title of this study is Saturated Fat is More Metabolically Harmful for the Human Liver Than Unsaturated Fat, Polyunsaturated Fat, Omega-3s, Omega-6s, um, Than Unsaturated Fat or Simple Sugars. Now, what's really cool about this study is they actually <laughs> gave people a thousand extra kilocalories of either saturated fat, unsaturated fat, polyunsaturated fats from plants, <laughs> saturated fats from animals, polyunsaturated fats from plants or unsaturated fats, and simple sugars. Just get all a thousand kilocalories of sugar. And this is what they found. 
And it's, it's pretty amazing because uh, the conclusions from these studies are, I mean, just, just really say it all. It's not sugar that's the problem. Look, if you've got uh, a, an obese person already who's already insulin resistant and that sugar is floating around in the system and can't get in because they're not exercising and they've got too much fat on their cell, yes, sugar added to that situation is not a good thing. It can turn into what's called uh, AGEs. These are really damaging chemicals because the sugar is breaking down in the bloodstream instead of in the cells where it should be, where it should be used for energy. But the sugar is not the cause of the problem. The sugar is contributing to the detriments of the problem. So you don't want to add sugar to somebody who is already diabetic. But a normal healthy person can utilize that sugar because insulin will take it, put it into the cell, and the body will use it as long as you're exercising and using that energy. So sugar is not the problem here in the case. And they showed this in the study. Now, they took actually 38 overweight people a uh, rough average age around 48 and gave them each a thousand extra kilocalories of saturated animal fat, plant fats, or simple sugars, a thousand calories a day extra. And they overfed them. And this is what they found. And I'm going to put it up on the screen for you. Um, and for those watching on um, Amazon Live, don't worry, I'll, we'll, we'll read it out loud too so you can see it. And you can uh, see all the links to the study and such um, on our uh, YouTube channel if you prefer. Okay, so the conclusions that SAT is saturated fat. Saturated fat induced the greatest increase in IHG, uh, TG, which is triglycerides in the liver, and uh, which is basically fatty liver. So what happens in this case is the liver gets loaded with fat. And then it stops producing insulin because it's got way too much calories, right? So it starts reducing the amount of insulin. Now that's a problem already because then you actually can't get that sugar shuttled into the cells where it belongs, which then leads to a whole much, much more problems. But look at this, the saturated fat increased, increased the greatest increase in fatty liver, insulin resistance, and harmful ceramide production. Ceramides have been linked to cardiovascular disease because they pile up and form plaques, which again leads to strokes, which is what I was talking about again. Those fats form ceramides, which are fatty acids, and they actually can pile up and form plaques, which can lead to strokes. So that is one of the probably uh, mechanisms of actions of how consuming animal fats, saturated animal fats, not only contributes to diabetes, but contributes to stroke and heart attack as well. Okay, so what are ceramides? Um, uh, ceramides are, let me uh, pull up this next study, the role of ceramides in diabetes mellitus, evidence and mechanisms. So this study is really good because it not only goes in just to a uh, corollary, it's actually looking at the cause, the mechanisms of action. And I love studies that do this because there's lots of ways to associate one thing and another, but every once in a while you get a study that actually looks at the mechanisms of action. This is a great study. If you're into reading studies, this is a great one for it. So it's the role, uh, the title of the study is the role of ceramides in diabetes mellitus, evidence and mechanisms. So mechanisms of action. So what did they, what did they find? And I'm going to put this up too as well, and I'll read it out loud. What they found, and this is really important because this is how damaging animal saturated fats are. Not only are they clogging up the muscle cells, shutting, causing insulin resistance, right? But this is even almost worse. Ceramides, which are uh, a metabolite from eating, consuming saturated fat. So when you intake saturated fat, it can break down to a fatty acid metabolite called ceramide. Ceramide then can cause a host of damaging effects, including leading to cardiovascular disease, uh, coronary heart disease, stroke, and of course, diabetes, but this is how it does it. Ceramides is a key player. This is a direct quote from the study. 
Ceramide is a key player in the induction, induction of beta cell apoptosis for cell death. And what is a beta cell? Beta cell is in the pancreas. It's responsible for producing insulin. So these ceramides are actually destroying the very cells that create insulin in your body. So not only are you causing that fat, causing the cells to shut down and be insulin resistance, which is what type two diabetes is, you're actually destroying through the mechanisms of that fat turn into ceramide and the ceramide destroying the beta cells, which create the insulin. So you're actually destroying the very thing that your body needs to produce insulin to get that sugar out of the bloodstream and into the cells where it belongs. That's horrible, but it goes even further. It killing, it's killing the apop, it's apoptizing or apoptizing, destroying the cells and cell death, insulin resistance, and the reduction of insulin gene expression. So your body's genetic makeup can't even get you to form those. So these ceramides inhibit the cell signaling in the cell, interrupt the whole process, shut down the genes, destroy the beta cells that actually produce insulin, and then fill up the cells with fat, which causes insulin resistance. And that is where diabetes, heart attack, stroke, all from this saturated animal fat. And it's clear by this that the ceramides are produced by these saturated animal fats. Now, are there saturated fats in the plant kingdom? Yes, there are. Coconuts, peanut butter, some of these do contain saturated fats, some of the nuts. So, but we're not eating saturated fats. Most people aren't eating coconuts at every single meal, three to four or five times a day. But we are eating the standard American diet, which includes animal uh, proteins and fats every single meal, you know, eggs, high in saturated fat, bacon with those eggs, butter with that all high in saturated fat, creating these ceramides, which are destroying building plaques in the arteries, stroke, heart attack, and then destroying our, our body's ability to utilize sugars. It is not the sugars. That first study actually showed feeding. Let me put up the graph because when you see it, you get a good visual. Let me go ahead and put up the graph here. This is the study showing animal saturated fat, polyunsaturated fat or unsaturated fats from plants, and then carbs, which in this case, they actually used simple sugars. So it's processed carbs, the worst of all kinds. Remember, complex carbohydrates, those bound to fiber in their whole food state work totally differently. They don't spike insulin. They don't extremely raise glycemic level, but simple sugars do. And they used actually simple sugars in the study. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Boom. There it is up on the screen. For those of you watching on Amazon Live, um, you'll have to catch the graph uh, on our YouTube channel. But you can see right there, that high bar that's two times higher than carbs, that's saturated animal fat. This is why it is so damaging to the body, increasing the risk of diabetes, almost double the effect of simple white sugar on the body for diabetes. Yeah, look, simple white sugar, I do not suggest anybody consume on a regular basis. Please do not consume as, as far as you can. Uh, simple sugars, you should be getting your complex carbohydrates, which are loaded with fiber, the slow the digestion, they have lots of polyphenols, which actually help work with glycemic balance in the body. They are loaded with antioxidants in their whole food state, which actually preserve and, and keep these uh, uh, other fats and other things from oxidizing, which can cause even more damage to the cellular structure. So let's get away from the language out there in social media that fats are bad for you. They are not, there are good fats polyunsaturated fats from plants that actually reduce inflammation, reduce the risk of diabetes, reduce the risk of cardiovascular health. Those are polyunsaturated fats. And of course, eye flour is the single richest source of omega-3 and 6 
of any plant known today, non-GMO plant. They've manipulated the genes to try to, <laughs> try to get as good as uh, good old nature provides for eye flower. But even, even the, the lentine in here supplies 34% in one scoop of your omega-3s. 34%, almost a third, well, to more than a third of your total dailies needs for omega-3 in a single scoop of a whole green plant. We use the whole plant in this. So this is truly whole food and clean green protein. And that's where we should be getting our nutrient from in their natural states, which have very anti-inflammatory effects. They don't cause these disease states. So we can see a very big difference between animal fats and plant fats, animal proteins versus plant proteins, hugely different effects, hugely different effects in the body and outcomes when it comes to disease states. So when you say, oh, I do this amount of protein, this amount of fats, and this amount of carbs, and this amount of fiber, well, fiber only comes from plants. So that one's an easy one. But where you get your protein, and your, your, um, your essential amino acids and your essential fatty acids, your proteins and your fats, where they come from may be even more important to your overall health than actually getting those macros and ratios down to right. Yes, you wanna control your total caloric intake. That's important for a healthy weight. It's important for overall health, but where you want to get them from is plants. Big difference in where proteins and plants come from, big difference in how they affect the body, our microbiome, our cellular health, and an effect on whether the animal, animal fats and proteins which cause disease states and the plant proteins which actually reduce and prevent those disease states. Big difference. So let's stop saying protein is bad. It's not, it's the animal protein that's bad, that, that uh, 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 fats are bad for you. They're not, depending on what fats they are and the quantities. Remember, it's not just saturated fats that are bad because if you do a little bit of saturated fats like from plants, like have some coconut or whatever, or a few nuts, that's not gonna be a big deal. Our body has mechanisms for breaking those down and efficiently processing. It's when we're consuming them all the time, these animal fats, these animal proteins, that's when they can be too much and that's where they become, become a problem because our body can't process them correctly to get them out. Look, we are metabolically designed to consume uh, plant proteins and, and plant fats. That is where we have the most health benefits and the more plants you can consume. That's why I want you to get the best health and fitness. When your body is trying to get fit, trying to lose weight, trying to come into a healthy state, the materials that you put in are gonna play a very, very important role on whether you reach those health goals or not. And I want the very best for you. That's why I choose the very best the richest source of polyunsaturated fatty acids of any plant in the world. It was the first to bring to the market. Winner of that, oops, Nexty Award. There you go, right there, Nexty Award, top supplement award in the United States. Also the winner of the Nexty Award um, was Clean Green Protein with Lentine. Lentine, the most nutrient dense plant ever discovered, even more so than Moringa, Chlorella, Chlo uh, Spirulina, Kale, Spinach, more nutrient density. So remember my three tenets, exercise with consistency, that'll do your body the most good. Exercise with intensity. I've got a great study next week that I'm gonna be talking about how intense exercise has much better health effects than regular exercise, just casual exercise. And so uh, consistency, intensity, and nutrient density. And that's why I was so excited to bring the most nutrient dense plant and the richest source of omega-3 to the marketplace because I want the absolute best for you so you can experience optimal health and enjoy life to its fullest, a nice, long, healthy lifespan by consuming the best nutrition possible and keep exercising. Thank you for joining me again. I've got a really exciting thing on exercise and how it impacts health. New microbiome search on how that changes our microbiome and some additional studies that will surprise you that the intensity of exercise 
may make a big difference in your health too as well. I hope you enjoyed this. If you do, give it a like, share it if you can. Uh, and if you feel so, because let's get this information out to people so that they can understand it. This is great scientific data that's coming out, really looking at stuff, blowing open myths that no, it's not sugar that's the cause of it. It's not carbs that are the cause of it. It is the saturated fat that's really the problem. And it's the saturated fat that's found mostly in animal foods. It is the animal proteins, it is the animal fats that are causing these problems. There's a big difference. So let's stop lumping all fats, all proteins uh, together and all carbohydrates. Simple carbohydrates, no go. Complex carbohydrates in their whole food state, starches, things like this. These are really health promoting and getting those right types of fiber. Remember four macronutrients, carbs, fats, proteins, and fiber. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you next week. Have a good week.